Hello and welcome to my channel Souls World. Today we are reading House of Flame and Shadow. I'm very excited because this is a new release. This is my first time reading a book on the release date and it's also one of my favorite authors so I'm very very excited for that too. If you are also reading House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass, let me know in the comments. But I'm very excited for this. I will say this video will be spoiler free. I don't want to ruin anything for anyone because I know this book is new and yeah I'm just very very excited. I have no other way to phrase it. I'm at a loss for words but yes I am very excited and probably gonna make this space just kind of like cozy and dry coffee and really just get into reading today. I'll maybe share like some reactions and thoughts again spoiler free and yeah just really enjoy some reading. If I can't put it down, I can't put it down. Ideally I'd like to take my time because these are some of my favorite characters and worlds and I just really really want to enjoy them. So hopefully I get to spend lots of time with them. If I rush through it, maybe that prompts a reread. The cover of this is beautiful. Honestly, this is such a great, even though it was an email, this is lovely book mail. If you got a physical book, I am so jealous because I, it, this is just stunning. And yeah, so we'll start off with that, I guess. Yeah, the cover, oh my God. I, like the cover is just, you know you're just in for something so good with a cover like this, I feel like. So I cannot wait to read this and share my thoughts with you guys and see what you think as well. If you're reading today or you are specifically reading this, let me know what you're up to and what your thoughts are as well. Okay, so, so far the book is so good. It has like sucked me right in, very hard to put down, um, but my phone is actually gonna die. So <laughs> I need to plug it in and I'll probably continue reading through the night. Bryce's chapters so far are my favorite chapters and let me know what if you agree with that or not but the book is doing a really good job of like catching you up without having to feel like you necessarily have to go back and find information i think anyway um i did listen to the flights of fantasy podcast which helped catch me up before i read this but yeah that's a really good resource actually if you want some catching up if you read the first two books like a long time ago but yes so far so good bryce's chapters are definitely my favorite I feel like I've been thrown right back into the thick of it, which I am so happy about. I am hoping this book is more fast paced than the first two. Very excited to keep reading and I'm gonna go plug my phone in. Okay, so quick uh, quick update on House of Flame and Shadow. I think I'm only about 100 pages in. Like I said, I'm trying to really enjoy this book, be in this world with these characters as long as possible. Really liking it so far. I forgot just how much was going on. There's a lot going on. So far, this is so good. I'm really, really enjoying this, but keep in mind I'm only about 100 pages in. We'll see how today's reading goes as far as what happens. Um, but yeah, so far I'm still kind of in the shock phase of like, oh my gosh, all of this is happening. So hopefully we get a little more of like answers, resolve going on. We'll see. It's still very fast paced. Uh, I can't put it down. I fell. I did fall asleep reading it last night. So that's where we're at. Currently 30% through-ish. This is much, much better than House of Sky and Breath in my opinion. It's just so much more engaging, fast paced, so much more has been revealed. It's less hard to follow. Like it's just better. I'm hoping that continues. I'm sure we are about to get thrown a bunch more information at us here and it'll be interesting to see how the rest of the book goes. There have been some like gut-wrenching moments already that are kind of hard to read at times but the book is super good so far and I'm really enjoying it. Okay so a quick update, I'm about 60% through House of Flame and Shadow. Still really enjoying it however I feel like just a ton of information all over again and I'm kind of just waiting for the other shoe to drop. Sorry if my cat's on the camera. I feel like all her books in the last hundred or so pages just go so wild, like flying off the handle, so much is happening. So I'm kind of feel like I'm getting to that point. <laughs> I'm almost anxious for what's going to happen to these characters. But yeah, I'm about 60% through. Hopefully I will finish it this week. Okay, so can we just take a moment for this white cup? I know it's just a white cup, but it was brought from Canada all the way to Portugal for me and I'm very grateful for the three new cups that I have to use. I also really like these Yetis because uh, I don't think I've ever shared this on here, but I am someone who literally just cannot drink their coffee before it gets cold. It will get cold and I will probably microwave it way too many times. Yes, I know that's disgusting. 
it's just how I am. This kind of prevents the microwaving though, which is nice. So I'm very happy to have it. <laughs> I do love these cups, so I'm very excited to have them. Anyway, that's a side note, but today we are doing the last part of the House of Flame and Shadow vlog, review vlog, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be basically like red flags and green flags. It's going to be completely spoiler free. I am excited because I think I mentioned before I got to read this book as like my first ever reading on a release date. So that was really cool. Uh, I did like a pre-order. I've never pre-ordered a book before. Also really cool. So yeah, the hype around it, very, very fun. I will say that that's something really cool about books that I really didn't know up until now is that there's a lot of hype and joy and fun and magic and just the pre-order anticipation of a new book release. So that was really cool. This is going to be basically whether or not I recommend the book and just some thoughts. Like I said, spoiler free, mostly just focusing on this book. If I feel like I have to talk about the other books, I will. I'm hoping not to do that though. I don't want to ruin any of the other books. So let's get into this book review. To start, some green flags. So these are some of the things that I really, really liked about this book in particular. Like let's remove all the other books and pretend this is like a standalone. It's not, it's part of a three part series. However, in this book, there were three things in particular that I really, really liked. And I want to remind you guys like, these are my green flags and like red flags. These are things I like and don't like. They might be the opposite for you. I'm just bringing them to your attention so you know they're there. However, sometimes they're not even really like things. They're just like the characters. So for me, the three main things in this book that stood out that I really, really loved and enjoyed probably the most out of the whole experience, two of them are characters. So one would be Lydia Servos. Servos? I don't know how to actually say her last name. But Lydia, her character development, her entire story in this book was probably my favorite out of every character. I also really enjoyed Rune's parts in this book, Rune Dannon, if I need to give the full name, maybe, yeah, anyway, Rune Dannon, Rune, Crown Prince of Val Barn Fay, or whatever that sound effect is, those two characters, super big green flags for me, both their storylines I really, really enjoyed, probably the most out of all the characters in this book. And then the third thing that I really don't think other people are going to agree with me on is I like like a chaotic multi point of view. I really, really do. I like that there were so many different like viewpoints and that she was interchanging between them so quickly. I know that's not everyone's favorite, but I felt like it kept me really engaged and on my toes and I really enjoyed that. So if that's something you like in books, that might be for you. However, if it's something that you don't like, that might not be a green flag for you. But those are my three favorite parts probably about the way the book was written, things within the book itself. Things that I... Things that I didn't enjoy that I would say are more like... These are, again, personal red flags, but the <laughs> main female character, Bryce Quinlan, I don't know if Sarah J Mass is trying to make her unlikable or what's happening there. I think I would honestly like her more if she turned into an antagonist or a villain of some sort. I don't know what's going on there, but I cannot say that I enjoyed... It's so funny because I think I have a clip saying that I like Bryce's chapters the most at the beginning. Honestly, you would need context with spoilers to understand why that is. It's not because of Bryce it's because of what is happening surrounding Bryce. Her character almost had like backward character development though, so I do think if she became a villain, that would be really, really interesting. I don't know what will happen there. It sounds like she, like her character story is probably done and if there is the next book in Crescent City would focus on other characters, which honestly would be a relief. I would almost take anyone's stories in this book over hers at this point. Same with Therian, he was not my favorite character in this. The other red flag for me is I did feel like there was, I don't even know how to put this, but basically a lot of, like it doesn't ruin anything, I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker, but there are a lot of characters and side stories that I felt didn't matter or at least didn't matter yet. Like potentially they could matter in the future, which is great. And I have had that happen with like Throne of Glass where I remember when the witches were introduced in that series and I was like, who are these witches? Like, why do I even care? And then later they were like a big deal and I fell in love with them and I cared so much. I guess that could happen. However, at this point, there were a lot of stories like 
that just were completely left unfinished and open and didn't necessarily seem to move the plot forward, which wasn't my favorite. They honestly just felt distracting. So to me, that wasn't great. I felt like the story itself could have been stronger if you removed a lot of those. And lastly, I think people know that Sarah J Mass is pretty well known for like what you could call fairy smut. The smut in this book felt so weird. I don't know, it, it felt like it was so randomly placed and just odd. That's all I'm going to say about that. It just felt like it almost was being put in because she's known for that and it, it almost would have been better if it just wasn't there, which I honestly can't believe I'm saying that, but yes, I think that was something if you took it out, the story might have been better. So as far as like red flags and green flags go, green flags, I personally think if you read this book, you will love Lydia and Rune. I also think that you, <laughs> if you're like me, you will really enjoy the multi point of view aspects of this book. I felt like it really did keep you on your toes the whole time. Although I have heard people say that they just found it confusing. So kind of just depends on what you like reading and how you like reading. And then as for red flags, like I said, Bryce Quinlan was not my favorite character in this book. She's the main female character. And then also the random side character side stories that didn't seem to really go anywhere and kind of became a distraction. And lastly, the randomly placed smut. It was just weird for me. These were the biggest things I noticed through the entirety of the book and reading process. Obviously, like I've mentioned before, these books have a lot of information being thrown at you, but this one felt like too much. Like it's not just like, oh, it's world building that you have to get through. It was like, it, what, what does telling me this in the book do besides, you know, just confuse me. In typical Sarah J Maas fashion, the last few hundred pages of the book are crazy. I didn't really do a vlog on the last, like after, after I was up to 60% I didn't really do like a reading vlog anymore. Yeah, it was wild. So that's pretty typical. I know some people don't like that. I actually find it fun, but some people don't like the cramming of so much in the last little bit. However, I felt like I was pretty engaged with this book comparatively to other books that I've been reading. So I didn't mind that the end was just wild. I think I just like chaos in books if I'm being honest. So yeah. Anyway, that's just my personal opinions on what some of the best parts were, some of the worst parts were. So now I'll give you basically the synopsis of the book without trying to give anything away and then some reading order advice in terms of if you are looking to reading this and then whether or not <laughs> I recommend this book or not. So I'm just gonna read the last part of the synopsis. I feel like this won't give anything away, but we'll kind of give you an idea of what's going to happen. Basically it says in the breathtaking sequels to books one and two, Crescent City series, the Crescent City series reaches new heights as Bryce and Hunt's world is brought to the brink of collapse with its future resting on their shoulders. Very much like going to war within their city and all that goes along with that. Lots of magical aspects and What's cool about this series, if you haven't read any of it yet, is that it is kind of like an urban fantasy, so they have new technology, cell phones and whatnot. We're not in like the, what, medieval renaissance ages? I don't know. We're not back in time where technology just like doesn't exist in the terms of what we've come to know. I wouldn't say anything like too futuristic is going on in the book though, so it's not like that. It's just more with like where we are at as a side as a, as a society currently <laughs> out of all of the books in this series this one was my favorite if you are going to read this series obviously there are two books before it house of earth and blood god i hope i'm saying that I'm getting that right i'm not even gonna look <laughs> house of earth and blood i feel like that's wrong and then House of Sky and Breath, and then oh, obviously this one, House of Flame and Shadows. I was saying that wrong in another video. I think I was calling it House of Shadow and Flame. It doesn't matter. Anyway, that's the three. That is the order of reading for this series. However, you might know that Sarah J Mass has other really popular series such as Throne of Glass and the A Court of Thorns and Roses Akatar series. So 
I will say as far as recommendations go, I would recommend this book if you've read Akatar and Throne of Glass. I don't think it matters what order you read those in per se, but prior to reading this, definitely you would enjoy Akatar a lot more. And after reading Akatar, I think it would make this experience much more enjoyable of reading the this series. If you haven't read either of those series or you're just getting into reading, no, I don't recommend this series. It's a lot. I think it could quickly get overwhelming and ruin the reading experience. Yeah, I do think if you've read her other series, this is a great read, especially if you've read Akatar first, just because that one is really easy to get into. It's fun, it's magical, pulls you in quite easily, and it's just a really fun place to start, especially if you're getting into reading. However, with this series, I would say if you haven't read those, like I said, or you're just getting into reading, just I wouldn't. With that said, I do and I don't recommend it. I think it's perfect for some people. It's kind of a niche group of people in a way. The hype around it is real. I will say the third book is the best of the three. Obviously, there's probably more coming out, so we haven't heard the last of these characters. I am excited to see what happens, especially because I really enjoy reading Sarah J Mass's work. I mentioned in a different video that she's kind of who got me into reading and then kind of kept me in reading, but overall, I really enjoyed the book. I think I gave it four out of five stars on Goodreads. I didn't enjoy it as much as Akatar or Throne of Glass books, but that was the case for me with this entire series. And I think that's because I did not like the main female or main male characters. So if you think you would like an urban fantasy with some other really amazing characters, with other amazing stories, multi POV and Honestly, in the other books, much better. I will say it was much better spot if you're after that. But yeah, these books are, they're great. They're really immersive. They really capture you, I think. They keep you interested. I have heard people say that they can get bored with them though, so that's why I wouldn't recommend them if you're just getting into reading. They're long books. They're like over 800 pages. This one was over 800 pages, I think. So I'll let you decide if that's a red or green flag, but yeah. I really enjoyed reading these books. I had a lot of fun. Like I said, it was really fun to be involved with like the community of people who were getting the book on release on the release date and reading it as a first time release book. Honestly, I just hope the next time I do this, I can go to maybe like one of the midnight bookstore party things that I saw. I didn't even know that was a thing. So that's really cool. Obviously, I don't know how to end this video. Basically, yes, I do recommend this uh, to a select group of people. <laughs> and then otherwise not so much. I did enjoy the book and I'm really excited to keep reading some other books. Right now I'm currently taking a break from fantasy and I'm reading In the Weeds by B.K. Borison. I think that's how you say her name. I'm enjoying that. Very lighthearted. <laughs> and I think I wanted to just end the video here and I hope you guys have a great week and let me know if you read this book, what you thought of it. We can try to keep it spoiler free. And yeah, if you're looking to get into this series and have any questions about reading any of the series in the Sarah J Mass, like, I don't even know what you would call that, her, because it's not a discog discog discography, I don't even know how to say that word, her work of books. If you have any questions about those, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And like I said, I hope you guys have a great week and I can't wait to see you in the next video.